your record in the FA Cup last year as well. Conceded one goal and we won the Cup. I mean, you must be so proud of, a penalty. of that. Oh. Yeah, yeah. You must be really proud of the contribution you made to, to that trophy last year because it was a, it's an, it's a really historic trophy and it, you know, the... With the, I think we've won it eight times in our history. So it's, it's hugely important, and obviously you were you were key to that. It was a, it was an amazing run, wasn't it? Yeah, it was. But I think it was easy for me because uh, I started with a Chelsea game. So um, I think this one was brilliant uh, because I had a lot of saves at this game. Um, so and then it's like you know when you have a good start, just run, 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 and don't think so much about anything else. It's like, just go and see what happened. And yeah, of course, um, this run was... How did how did you prepare yourself mentally for the games? Obviously, Ederson's playing in the Premier League and you're coming into the cup games and playing. Yeah. Um, I think you, you don't have to split it. Like, you know, like today is FA Cup and I play in the FA Cup. Uh, today is Champions League. It's just, just a game. Um, and I had, when I was was young and started with the first team I had a coach and he said always um, you play how you train so and that's why I always try to do everything during the week and when I feel I did everything in the week I'm ready for the game so nothing can happen mistakes can happen of yeah. course but you know I, I'm prepared Just that preparation yeah, and trust in myself yeah. can I ask you about Xabi Mancisador our goalkeeping coach Pep firmly believes he's the best in the world. I mean, what's your experience of working closely with him? He recommended you, of course, to City as well. He identified you as the, the goalkeeper we needed. What what have you made of uh, working with him? Um, yeah, I think it's not only him. Um, it's good to have a lot of different cultures because he's a Spanish guy. Uh, we're rich. We have an English guy. Then with Eddie in the goalkeeper group from uh, Brazilian, uh, Brazil and Scott as well, English guy, me a German. So we bring a lot of different ideas of goalkeeping yeah. uh, inside of the goalkeeper group, and so we can, you know, we can take the best of every everything. So it's so good, I think, because Xabi, Xabi had a good eye on the small details. It's, I think, for for normal people, it's difficult to see. I think you have to be a goalkeeper to understand what what he wants uh, from you. You know, like because when I told you a wide set or stay narrow. Yeah, it looked like, to me like, uh, what yeah. Was, yeah, yeah. So it's just like in the positions, um, what you can change, how wide are your legs, um, how is the, the upper body? It's like in the small details, and yeah, it's it's really good to work with them, and also as a guy, as Rich and Shabi, they're so good. So it's easy in this goalkeeper group to first to improve and learn, but also can be. Yeah, like like you are, you know. It's not like you it's have a, to change your uh, identity. It's a special group, isn't it? The goalkeepers' union. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, you all look out for each other. Yeah, almost, yeah, yeah. Because it's such a specialized position. Is that why that it's almost separate to the to the outfield players in some ways? Yeah, of course. Uh, it's just like one can play, but you know, I can't be angry to to Eddie because he's doing during the week the same like me. He train and show the best version of him. And I think everyone has the same, yeah, the same idea of showing respect in this group. That's why we we improve a lot. Yeah, I think it's a backup goalkeeper at City has been maybe not a problem in the past, but the the quality, the drop off in quality was a lot bigger. Whereas now we feel we've got an outstanding um, second goalkeeper. Again, me and Paul were talking about this before. They must this team is incredible. It makes so much fun to to be a part of this group, uh, not only on the pitch, especially like when we travel, when we're in the locker room. Um, you know, some of these guys, it's it's just like a crazy group of so many cultures and it's so funny. Um, and also to live here in England, especially here in Manchester, it's not too bad, to be fair. Yeah. So yeah. I think on that, I think we were saying again before, I think last last couple of seasons and went to this season I don't think I've known a group as tight and as close as, as what the group is here do you find that as well yeah yeah I agree because it's like of, of course um when some some players are not playing so much they're a bit angry but yeah it's it's simple but you win together and you lose Absolutely. together and this is true here 
Yeah. I speak to a lot of the coaches and they say it's the best atmosphere. There's no factions and groups. No. Everybody is together. I presume that's pretty rare in football to have a dressing room that's genuinely uh, like a really good group atmosphere. Yeah, I had it only one one time in Bielefeld, my former team, um, in this year where we promoted in the Bundesliga. Um was similar to here, like uh, a lot of different people, but you know, with the success and yeah, it's, it's coming quick and then you have a good relationship. Um, but yes, I would say this, this year is a bit bigger because um, yeah, the whole world can see what we do. Who who would you say is your best friend in the in the city squad? Who would you hit hit it off with the most? It was was Ilkay. Uh, yeah. So I was really sad when he called yeah. me and said, "Steph, uh, I'm I'm leaving." Um, but yeah, Scott, Scott, because yeah, he he helped me a lot in the beginning. Like uh, when I had questions, he said, "Like Steph, look, um, this is going on like this, this, this." You know, when you have questions, come to me. I help you. Um, but now it's also like with Calvin and John, I have a good relationship. But to everyone, it's like I, I can go with everyone for a coffee or for a dinner. Right. So it's not like, you know, you sit on the table and don't find um, anything to speak, you know. So, And do you think t to be treble winners, which, which obviously City are, you need that. It's not just about having 23, 24 great players. You also have to have that that you've just described because that's that gives you the uh, like an edge over other teams, maybe. Yeah, of course. Um, because also like um, for the starting eleven, when they don't feel the pressure from behind, I think it's normal to to get a bit lazy, you know. So everyone is there and trying to to show his best every day, and I think that's why. Um, everyone gets a lot of minutes of uh, game time. Um, of course, someone is playing more, someone a bit less. But at the end, it was like everyone played played a big role to reach this, what we reached. It's as if they're constantly pushing each other all the time, whether you're in the team or not, to be better. And I think that. That shows the success that we've had over the last few years. Yeah, Pep's, we again, talking about this earlier, Pep's ability to keep everybody involved. It's expert management, that, isn't it? Because you've got a group of players who are, are all so good. There's no weak players at all. And to keep everybody feeling like they're contributing, that is a difficult job for a manager, but he does it so well, doesn't he? Yeah, of course. It's also a smart decision to, to say, of course, it can be dangerous to have a small squad. Yeah. But at least when everything works, what I mean, like everyone get play time, uh, everyone is playing games, um, so everyone feel important. Yeah, and I think um, this this is a good decision from Pep to yeah. say every time I prefer a small squad because then the chance is higher to to handle everyone easy. Mm -hmm.